Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to start what I think is going to be like a two or three part series where we're going to show you how to develop this C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And I've talked a lot about software development using C Sharp, uh, C++, Fortran, other programming languages on this channel. I encourage you to take a look if you've never done any software development before. I've got a three part series on how to start your first program. Um, and in this video, we're going to show you how to write this program, and it's going to focus on what you see here, which is this animation. It's something we haven't talked about before. And what this is doing is this is drawing about 30 times a second. It's drawing this waveform of yellow pixels, and it's drawing it pixel by pixel, and it's doing the entire thing 30 times a second to give this animation. Now this particular animation is showing something you may not have seen before, and it's called a Lisaju pattern. And what it is doing is it is plotting two separate waveforms, two separate sinusoidal waveforms, simultaneously, one on the x-axis and one on the y-axis, and the result is these waveforms. And we've got some track bars where you can adjust it. And you can see if um, I change some of the parameters in these sine waves, we can change the resulting waveform. And you can see up here, it is calculating these two equations where the x value is an a times sine of an alpha, which is this slider here. And then the y value is b times the sine of beta, which is um, this slider here. And you can adjust those and get different least due patterns in the window. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about something we discussed before, which is called range mapping that allows you to, when you calculate these sine wave values, it might go from minus one to one, but somehow you have to translate that into pixel locations in this bitmap. So we're going to talk about that. Now this particular um, Lisa Ju pattern, what piqued my interest in this was a video by another YouTube content creator named Paul McWhorter. And Paul is quite different from most tech content creators on the internet in that he has some real world experience over many years. And he actually is an electrical engineer who worked at Sandia Labs. Now, I've been an electrical engineer for over 45 years, and honestly, I've always been kind of jealous of what they do at Sandia Labs. They do some really neat research. It is a U.S. government research facility, and Paul was actually even a deputy director in the microsystem science section of Sandia Labs. So really very impressive, and unlike most content creators on the internet who have basically no training, no experience in the real engineering, science, technical world. And most of them are just salespeople for, you know, cool equipment with flashing lights that helps them play video games. So um, I encourage you to take a look at his channel if you really want to learn some stuff. Uh, he does a lot of data acquisition, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and that kind of thing, and some software development. So I encourage you to take a look. So what piqued my interest was his challenge on how can you actually do this Lisa Ju pattern where you are plotting two sinusoidal waveforms simultaneously. So this code is the result of doing that and adding some functionality where we can change some of the parameters and adjust the pattern. Now in the future we may look at converting this into like a 3D image which is called a hyperbolic paraboloid. So if I maintain my interest, um, we may get into that. But in the first couple of videos, at least, we're going to show you how to develop this um, application. Now, if you have done any work with oscilloscopes, you may have seen mention of the Lisa Ju pattern. And here is an example on my bench where I've got my oscilloscope and I've got a signal generator. And the signal generator is sending out two similar sine waves that are a little bit different. And they're going into the two channels of our oscilloscope down here. And you can see the resulting waveforms, the blue and the yellow up top. Those are the two sine waves coming in. And the resulting Lisa Ju pattern that is generated in this scope by using what's called the XY mode. Where again, you are plotting one sine wave on the X axis and the other sine wave on the Y axis. Now, recently in another series, I showed you how to develop an application that looks like this. Again, it's a C-sharp um, user interface application that allows you to connect to the signal generator, your oscilloscope, or whatever 
bench equipment you have, and we can do it over USB or local area network Ethernet. And this application we were using, one of the uses we had was to plot what's called a sweep frequency response analysis, where we used it to test a transformer. And the transformer is comprised of a lot of inductances and capacitances. And as you apply a sine wave of varying frequencies, the impedance of that will change. And you can see here we've got two windings showing the output voltage as you feed these varying frequencies. On the x-axis, we got from 10 to 10 megahertz, and then we've got the output voltage. And you can basically, when you have a new transformer, you can get a signature of the sweep frequency response analysis. And then over the years, to check if something has gone wrong, if you got like a short circuit, uh, it will change this signature, this frequency response waveform. And then using that, you may be able to figure out if it's uh, still a good transformer or not. So we may um, add to that where you can, you can access your oscilloscope and show the waveforms. We may add this uh, XY mode to allow you to plot uh, two signals on the waveform like we have with this Lisa Ju. So now, as we always do, whenever we are doing any engineering science endeavor, the first thing you want to do, the most important thing you want to do, is design it. You don't want to just jump in and start writing code. You want to design it. So let's first take a look at how this is going to work to draw this animation. So um, again, we said, as this documentation shows, it, it calculates a Lisa Ju pattern using two equations that are basically sine equations. And they have different parameters. And we've got two track bars that allow us to vary in real time some of those parameters, in this case, the alpha and the beta. We also have a start button and a stop button and an exit button. Now, I talked about track bars uh, in, a, in a recent video showing you how those work. So the first thing we're going to have to think about, how are we going to draw this? Well, this particular image here is what's called a bitmap. And it is basically, in this case, 400 pixels by 400 pixels. And the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to generate a background image. And 30 times a second, we're going to have to grab that background image and add pixels to it. The first thing we're going to have to do is generate a black background bitmap. And then we're going to need a system timer. And the system timer is going to, you know, 30 times a second, it's going to send an event to our software that says, hey, the timer is timed out. It's 1 30th of a second. You need to draw your image. And we're going to have an event handler for that timer. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to grab the black background and it's going to modify it. So we're going to have to get a copy of the black background, each timer event, add our pixel waveform in yellow, and then display it. And then next time through, do the same thing. Grab the black background, add our updated waveform, and display it. So we know we're going to have to have a system timer. We're going to have to have some bitmaps that we generate. We're going to have to have a black background. And then we're going to have the second one, which is the foreground that has the black background plus the yellow waveform. And we're going to have to have some place here where we are calculating these two equations. Now we also mentioned that, so it could be a result um, of X that goes from minus one to one and Y goes from minus one to one. However, you can't plot those on a 400 pixel by 400 pixel image. So you're gonna have to do what we talked about previously, which is do range mapping. And we're going to have to somehow come up with an equation that says um, for an X value and a Y value, what are the corresponding pixels we have to change to yellow? So let's take a look at a uh, basic diagram for how this thing is going to be laid out. So here's a basic flow chart of how we're going to set up our application. Um, first thing we want to do is we're going to, uh, as we start up the application, we're going to draw the black background. And then we are going to enable our timer. And most of the work done in this application is going to be this event handler. So every 1 30th of a second or whatever, it's going to send an event to the event handler. And we're going to do our calculation of the waveform. So the first thing we do in the event handler is we're going to have to grab a copy and clone the background. So we get a new black background. 
and we will add our pixel values to that. And then we're just going to loop. And we're going to have to calculate the x and y equations, the sine equations, and get x and y values. And then we're going to have to do some range mapping. We're going to have to convert those x and y values to equivalent pixel locations in our bitmap. Once we've got those, we can draw the pixels in the bitmap to make our new image. And then once that's all done, we can display it. So in one thirtieth of a second, we might loop through this a thousand times to calculate all the points for a particular waveform. And then next time we're going to go through the whole thing all over again. Another thousand times we're going to loop through, draw the pixels, display it, and so on. So here's the basic layout of the application. So in the next video, we'll talk about this uh, C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And we've got our user interface here. We'll talk about how to do that. And then this is the code that is basically laid out as we have it. And um, we've got some methods to draw the black background, to do the range mapping, and then some event handlers to do the timer event handler. And that's going to do all the, the work of calculating and displaying the waveform. So in the next video, we'll go through in detail how this works. Um, I encourage you, if you're liking these videos, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.